we're doing a list of my my favorite games ever. I've I've tossed around the idea of doing this for a long time. It's finally time. Now these are not these are not the best games ever. I want to make sure and emphasize that these are just my favorite games. Um, with, there's there's a heavy dose of nostalgia, of course, in there. Uh, I, I am playing along with this. In my opinion, the best soundtrack ever. There's some Stellaris music going to be kicking up here in a second. But what we're going to do is we're going to go through my my 20 favorite games of all time. Um, this is a list that I've wanted to do for a while. And finally, I've put it together with this past month. I have been playing a lot of these. Um, and so you'll see a heavy dose of nostalgia, I'm sure, in here. Some of these oldies. But um, in playing these recently, I have sort of fixed this list around to what I think is the best. So, we will start we will start with number 20 on my list. And that is Monkey Island. Um now I'm putting Monkey Island 3 because Monkey Island 3, uh, you know, what? I'll start this I'll I'll start at the very beginning. I'll go what is the game and then I'll tell you about what I like it about it. So Monkey Island is a point and click adventure, heavy dose of humor. You're a you're a dude stuck in the Caribbean. Uh, want, you want to be a pirate. And and Mary Elaine, little LeChuck's out there. Oh, yeah. But anyway, anyways, the reason I like three, one, it was a tough decision. Do I like one or do I like three better? I think I like three better because you got Murray. Um, you have the Barbary Coast Pirates. Um, and it's also the one that I, <clears throat> I like, really got into and I spent a lot of time with. And also, also, um, I got a computer for, like, a graduation present. And... Like my mom and my brother went on it and got me this computer, and this is my present. And on that computer was Monkey Island 3 um, as sort of part of the gift. And um, fantastic game. Um, I'm going to say that. For, I'll, I'll try not to say that for all these. But, um, yeah, that's my number. Number 20. I make sure we start with, with a bang. Or with, um, with some insert Monkey Island joke here. Uh, number 19. We're going to Keeper RL. Keeper RL came out uh, came out this year, 2024. Monkey Island, by the way, came out in 97. Uh, so this one came out in 24, and it's been in development forever. I first played it, I think, like in... I don't know when I first played it. 2019 is, is I think... I don't know, I played it, I've been playing it for a while. Um, and it's, it's a colony builder. It's a dungeon keeper style thing. You go in, you build a dungeon... Uh, but in that sort of room world and dwarf fortress style, but more on a like a lighter weight. And you may see this pop up sometimes where there is a much more complex um, game like it. But a lot of times I like the more simple one. Um, just for the sake of basically for the sake of that, it's a little bit more simple. And it does all it ticks all the uh the dungeon keeping boxes that i want build a dungeon you know the orcs and the goblins of the world need somewhere to live you give them that home my friend learned english at the age of 10 with monkey island 1 and 2 you know i've heard that um i've heard that more than once unless it's you that keeps saying it over and over again i've heard that a few times people that have learned english from monkey island i think every time i play cuz i've gone through 1 2 and 3 on my channel i've played them all all three of those in full and I think I see that comment pop up sometimes, so I find that interesting. Uh, anyway, th there is uh, Keeper RL, number 19. So number 18, we have Anno 1602. As you know, I am a bit of a fan of Colony Builders. And I'm trying to think of this. I think this might be the first, like, proper Colony Builder that I played, like this style. Um, where you go out, you, you, uh, you settle a, an island chain... Sort of a Caribbean-like thing of building little towns in the uh, in the islands. You may see the term. I've, I've sort of learned some things as I put this list together. I guess I have something with Caribbean and islands and colonizing places. That seems to be a thing that pops up a lot. Um, and it was the first of that. And it's really the only one I've really played. Um, I know I, I've played a few of those, but the only one I've, I've played, spent a lot of time with. I know the other Anos kind of do the same thing. It's the same formula over and over and over again. Um, this one came out in 98, and it's just sort of your classic island building colony builder, and I think it does it well. I just played it just like a week ago. It's still, it holds up, 
And every single one of these, as I mentioned earlier, I've I've played I played almost all of these in this past month. And I've rearranged a few things. Some things are a lot higher than they were. Some things are lower than they, than I thought they would have been. Uh, some things aren't on the list anymore that I thought were great. Um, and uh, so, so my my I'm trying to wipe away that little bit of the nostalgia, but I'm sure it's still there. This one, Command and Conquer, Command and Conquer Red Alert Two is next. What are we on? This is seventeen. Red Alert Two. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um. So I, I I didn't do a video of this one, but I um I pulled it up, and I was I, I thought I should um I should like um I should have a I should at least play this thing play this thing a little bit make sure I still want to put it on my list. So I opened the game up, the opening somatic played, and then that song kicked on. You know, if you played Red Alert, you know the song. And I was like, yep. This, this has this has to go in there. So heavy dose of nostalgia. This was it came out in 2000. By the way, it's a it's a alternate history modern RTS um, with uh, yeah yeah Hell March. And um, this was this was our land party game when I was when I was a kid. Red Alert two. And so this one's got a heavy dose of nostalgia, but it still is a fantastic RTS. But um, yeah, yeah, there you go. There's, there's, there's Red Alert 2. Okay, so we're on uh, 16. 16 is uh, Tropico 4. Uh, Tropico is, here's, well, it, it is a settle of the, settle of the Caribbean. Build a, a city in a Caribbean style Banana Republic kind of setting. Um, a Caribbean city builder, basically. And, um... I, I, I'm trying to think, why, what is so special about Tropico? Why do I like Tropico so much? I play these city builders all the time. What is special about Tropico 4 over, like, Tropico 5 or 6 or 3 or whatever? Why is 4? And I think 4, I think 4 gets that, I think it gets that Caribbean vibe that they're trying to go for with Tropico. Um, the music is, is spectacular. The, the humor along, along, along with it, um... It just, it does that the best of all these city builders and things that I have, that I have played. Colony builders, I should say. Tropical Four is, is, uh, number 16 on that, on that list. <clears throat> yeah, I do play games with mods every once in a while. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. So, there is Tropical Four. Number 15 is, uh, it's my game that I play when I'm sick. <laughs> Mostly. Um, it's, it's one of these puzzle, uh, island building kind of, or world building kind of games. It's very peaceful. Not much thought goes into it. You just kind of place it down. You build your, you build your island, you build your world. And it came out in 2022. Um, I played, a, I played a bit of this on the channel, but anytime I have a day where I like, I don't really want, I don't really like, feel like streaming. I don't feel, I just, I'll just play some Dwarf Romantic. And so I'll just play some Dwarf Romantic. Um... And um, there's, we've got a lot of these now. This is this has basically created a whole genre. I mean, there was things before this, but this there's a bunch of these now. Place down hexagons and make and make a world type setting. And um, this one I think does it best. Um, I I couldn't tell you why. I like it better than all the other ones. I don't know. Um, but I I. Uh, I, I always I always go back to this one. I don't I skip the other ones I play I play for an hour. I can always go back to this one. Was it difficult to put a number on each? It was very difficult. Um I've been planning to do this list for a long time and I've always kinda like I've started it and I'm like, ah, not even gonna try it. And I finally I sat down and I, I played a bunch of these games and um I finally like first I just put all the games that I thought might go on the list and then I sort of slowly kind of numbered them as as I wanted to. Would I want to play this one over this one? So yeah. Uh, next up was number 14, I think is where we're at. Railroad Tycoon. And that's the original Railroad Tycoon. I didn't play a whole lot of the other ones. Uh, I played the original one. This isn't on Steam. Um, it is the... Uh, uh, like, do a Railroad railroad Tycoon or like open or like Transport Tycoon, those, those kinds of things. Railroad Tycoon is the one that I have fonder memories of playing. I've played it a couple times on the channel. And it still holds up. Um, it's not the best thing to look at, but um, that sort of like you start with 
tiny town. You start rolling the tracks in there. It's a train building game, I should say these things. It's a train building game. Came out in... I have this all written down. In 90, 1990. Um, and you're basically building a train empire. Um, connecting from city to city, like any other transport game. Um, if, if I... My, my, my next favorite modern style of this I've played a lot of train games none of them really do it for me like this one did except for one uh, and that's Machinki I didn't put Machinki on the list but um, that's the next closest thing I think to like a railroad tycoon I think the, the developer of Machinki is just a guy who really likes trains I think it just kind of kind of get that feeling out of it and that's kind of what I'm feeling with railroad tycoon but anyway railroad tycoon that one is number whatever we're at uh, number 13, we're still going old, but not quite as old as this one. In 1993, we're going to SimCity 2000. Um, I played a lot of SimCity as a kid. And uh, I played a lot, even more SimCity 2000. City Builder, classic City Builder. There ain't nothing wrong with it. It's, it's again, it kind of meets that it's, it's not too complex. It's not too simple. It's just right, you know? hits everything. It's not bad to look at. It's the pixel art. You could play this thing today and people would think, oh, look at that new game. That, that new pixel art game that that's, you're playing. Um, send your monsters in. Yeah. So, I was a massive Sim SimCity fan. I, I played it. I, that's, that was what I played a lot of. I mean, all these. All these. Um, uh, next up, we're still staying old-timey. Then we're going to do Age of, Age of Empires 2. Um, this is a medieval real-time strategy. Came out in 99. I noticed as I was putting this together, I was putting these dates together, that there seems to be, like, very set times when I was playing these. I played a lot of Age of, Empire, Age of Empires 1. Um, I might have actually played that one more than this one. But 2 was one of those that I did a lot of land party stuff with. And, I mean, obviously the game still holds up. They're still making stuff for it. There's, like, a new update just came out. What was it? The Dawn of the Dukes 2021? Yeah, the Rome one. Rome 2023? There's... 2024? They're still putting stuff out for this game. It's crazy. Um, this is the RTS that every RTS that comes out wants, wants to be. And, um, again, it just it hits all the... Uh, everything you want with an RTS there. I've never been, like, a... Um, I've never been a good RTS player, but I like medieval castle building kind of stuff, and so that's what I liked about this one. So, anyway, that was, uh, what number was that? That was 12, so we're on number 11. Number 11, we're going, we're going modern. We're going to a, um, an incomplete game. <laughs> this is still in development, but it's still, uh, on my list. Not in the top 10. Let's not get carried away. But it is number, uh, what, number 11. Songs of Six. This one, I originally played it in 19, or in 19, in 2019. And it's still being developed. This is a, uh, if you like Dwarf Fortress, or, uh, like a RimWorld kind of thing. It's that, but, like, crank it up a few thousand times. And, uh, the thing about this one, I think that, that sets it apart, and why I like it so much, is the way that it does, like... There's multiple games, as the way that it escalates. Kind of like what we just did with that Memoriopolis game. It's kind of the same idea. You start, you've got this little colony sim. Um, this one does it bigger. A little colony sim, seven, ten people, whatever. And then you go into this little fort builder, and you've got maybe a maybe hundred people in town. And then it grows again, and you're starting to build a city with like thousands of people in your town. Uh, and then you end up going into the world and start conquering places 4X style. And it's all it's all there, and it, it actually progresses through the time. It, yeah, I could say all kinds of things about Song of Six. Um, it is still in early access, but it is one of the best games ever, in my opinion. Before we get to the top ten, I have um, I've put together six games that I wanted to put on the list, but they didn't really fit in the top 20, but I, I had to mention them just because... Just because I had to mention them in a list of my favorite games. I had to mention them. And I'll try not to smack my face into the microphone. I'm too big here. Um, 
Warlords 1. Honorable mentions, Warlords 1. Uh, I played this recently. It is still a fantastic war game, turn-based style war game. Uh, and the thing about Warlords 1 is that map. Um, I, I'm, um, how do I put this? A bit of a nerdy kid. And some of you know how much I like maps. I love to just sit in school and draw that map. I'd always play these, I can't remember the names, sorry. These guys up here. And I'd, I'd draw that, I'd draw that map and I'd like, this, this is, this is what I would do in school. Draw maps and all the other kids are playing football or whatever they are with their Pokemons and i am draw maps. Warlords maps. Uh, anyway, it's turn-based strategy war game. It's very simple. Um, Warlords. Honorable mention. Honorable mention number two uh, is Lemmings. <laughs> the tribes. Now, the reason I have Lemmings in here. Uh, lemmings, by the way, is like a puzzle game. Uh, a bunch of little Lemmings folks. You gotta like try to guide them through a puzzle, through a map. Um, I, um, I like this Lemmings because Lemmings to the tribes came with a book. Like a kind of like a choose your own adventure book, and I was never much of a reader, as nerdy as I was. I was never much of a reader, but I read that book, and you had uh, all the um, all the different lemmings. There was a bunch of little different lemmings, like tribes. There was the winter folk and the sea folk and the Viking folk, and they all had their own stories in this book. And I remember going on vacation and like carrying this book around, um, lemmings book. So, there's an honorable mention for Lemmings. Uh, number three is Star Wars, TIE Fighter, X-Wing. Both of them. X-Wing versus TIE Fighter. Throw them all in there. Uh, I was a pretty big Star Wars nerd when I was a kid. And um, I was a pretty big Star Wars nerd, even though I had never watched Star Wars. I had just played these games. And um, I played a lot of them. This is a space dogfighting game. Um, and... I, I played them for a long time before I actually saw the movies. And, yeah, so there you go. Uh, I don't know what to say about that. This one else can come out. Do I have it written down? I do. Uh, TIE Fighter 1994. So Lemmings 93, TIE Fighter 94. Those dates seem to pop up a lot. Uh, next up, we've got Wildermyth. 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 Hey, we're going, we're going modern times. This is 2021. Um, I, I, put, I put Wildermyth in here because... Um, I played this one for the channel. And I think, I think this one, um, I think this one showed me what I like about games, about certain games, and about a lot of these games, is that this is just turn-based, tactical, fantasy, kind of D&D &D kind of a thing. And the, um, as you play the game, these sort of, these stories start happening, and your characters kind of, like, evolve, and, and it's a kind of a story-heavy D&D &D kind of thing. Um... And the reason I like it is because of sort of the stories and the way that your characters sort of evolve and all that story things going along with it. And the reason I like it is because you get attached to the characters. The characters are the ones that are important when you play these kinds of games. And um, I think Wildermyth taught me that. I know it's called Wildermyth, but I'm going to call it Wildermyth forever. So I'm sticking with it. Um, anyway, Wildermyth, what are we at? We're, um, I got a couple more here of, of honorable mentions. Foundation is an honorable mention. It is still in early access. I play a lot of these sort of casual city builders, medieval city builder things, and um, this one's probably my my favorite. Uh, not probably, this is my favorite of that bunch of these sort of gridless, not necessarily, not necessarily even gridless, these medieval builder things. It's very laid back, very peaceful. Uh, it does the the medieval vibe of building a town well, very well. Um, and that, that part right there where you just kind of painted in the, the, the housing area. I, I really like that. Um, I like not having to go in and like put down every, every house. I just, I just put down a, a, a swath of area peasants you can build there and how the town sort of organically, it does a really good job of making an, an organic town. There's no grids. Um, you know, you don't really worry about where things fit in. There's no like... People can't go to the tavern because it's two spaces, it's two squares too far away. Um, that always kind of anno annoyed me. Um, it's very organic city builder. And so that, another honorable mention, still in early access. Uh, I think I got one more honorable mention. Yeah, Wayne Gretzky hockey. Um, 
Wayne Gretzky Hockey 3, to be to be specific. I played them all, but 3 is the good stuff. Um, I played a lot of hockey games. I, didn't really, I haven't really played much here. I, know I, re I don't really talk about it much, but I play a lot of hockey games. And, um, yeah. Um, I don't know what else to say about it. This one came out in, like, 93. Uh, 92 for this one. I remember when I got this, when I got this for Christmas, it was already open because my brothers had already been playing it the day, the night before. But, yeah, happy Christmas hockey memories. You can make your own teams. Oh, good, good stuff. Good stuff. It makes me happy just looking at it. Okay, okay. So, there's the honorable mentions. They don't make, they don't get a number. They just, um, they just get a, uh, um, a mention. Let's go to number 10. The Sims 2. Uh, if you, um, if you had asked me what my favorite Sims game was like 10 years ago, I would have said Sims 3. There's these paper screenshots there. Um, but after playing, after playing it on here, I kind of rediscovered Sims 2. I played a bit of it when it came out, but I played it on here on the channel. Uh, there's so much like, how do you how do you how do you compare this one to uh, the other ones? It's the depth and the complexity. There's so much more that you can do with the Sims 2 than the other ones, and things are like not easy. That's the, other, that's the other thing I like about it. Things aren't just simple. You can't just go in and and it's a life sim, by the way. You can't just go in and do whatever you want. And and be a superhero. Sometimes you, it's, it's a life sim. It's a life sim. You can do whatever you want. It's very complex. Depth all over. <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, this one um, came out in 2004. And, and then you start adding in mods. It's also one of my favorite, like, YouTube memories is making my Sims 2, like, the Sims 2 Let's Play of, of making a neighborhood. And every day I built onto this neighborhood, this big town. Um... And you couldn't have done that with that one. Sims 2 is the one that, that would allow you to play that long with it. Anyway, that's number 10. Uh, number 9. Start a fire and get friendly with a firefighter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> number 9 is Kenshi. Um, Kenshi, by the way. Uh, that sums it up right about there. That's that, that video. Just watch that. There you go. <laughs> uh, free roaming squad based RPG came out in 2016 uh, the world is terrible and uh, you are a nobody the um, I think that's I, th I think the I think that's the reason I like it I didn't like it at first when I first played it but as I played it more I think that whole like you are a nobody the world is terrible um, whatever, I think someone made a comment on my last Kenshi video. Whatever doesn't kill you, you wish had. Or something like that. I think it's a good way of summing up Kenshi. Um, it's brutal. And... I love it. Um, <laughs> um, you can do whatever you want. You want to be a traitor, you want to be, you know, it says it all there. You, you can do whatever you want. You can run your own town. Um, and then eventually... You get real tough. And strong, and you can finally start taking them all down. And then you go in, all those people that, like, tore your limbs off and ate your legs, you go in there and you take them down. Good stuff. What timing as the name scrolls across. Okay, number eight. Number eight on my list is an incomplete game called Star Sector. Star Sector is... Um, this... When did Star Trek first come out? 2011. Build a space fleet, open world, do what you want. We want to be a pirate? You'll be a pirate. You want to build your own faction? You can do that. You want to trade? You can do that. End game stuff, you know. Um, do whatever you want. And again, just like Kenshi, I found I found some things about myself here. You're a nobody. Uh, you can you can you walk out into space and you can get blasted real quick if you're not careful. But eventually, eventually, you can work yourself up to be somebody. But um, it's sort of that, um, you know, open world, do what you want kind of thing. And it's over here. Uh, not on Steam. 
Uh, number seven came out in 2013. This is the game that I people ask me all the time. Hey, you know what? What game should I play? What should I get? And this is the one I always say: RimWorld, uh, Colony Sim, sci-fi style, Crashland. You know, build a colony. Um, and then what else do you do? Whatever, whatever you want. And then with with all of these updates, it's, it's gotten incredibly complex. I remember the early days of playing RimWorld, where I get comments all the time, like, "Ah, this is just a rip off of of Dwarf Fortress." Um, I got a comment when I, on my, on one of my, what was it? I think it was on my Dwarf Fortress video asking about, like, something about along the lines of was RimWorld, or was Dwarf Fortress just a ripoff of RimWorld, basically. The other way around <laughs> That's how it's, is how it's come around now. Um, but especially with all the other, uh, um, the other uh, DLC that's out there now, it's incredibly complex. You don't need a DLC. There's a million mods that you can go on there. It is one of those games. Yeah, it's one of those games that I will never uninstall. Um, it, it, it is it is the game that I recommend to everyone that need that wants a game. What should I play? This game is one that you can put many, many hours into and never have the same thing happen again. You know, Katsu, thank you very much. Um, but yeah, there's RimWorld. Number seven. Number six. So if if you'd asked me my, my favorite games ever, I would have I would have put this number seven here. I would have put it at number two. But I've I've rearranged some things after playing all this stuff. And it hurts me to have it look this low. And that's Master of Orion 2. It hurts to say it's number seven. Six. Number six. Um that feels a little better. Number six is feels a little better. <laughs> uh it came out in ninety-six. And this is the first game I ever played on my channel. Um, first Let's Play was Master of Orion 2. Uh, build an empire in space. Space game. And like the others, kind of like Keeper RL, you know? it's uh, it's There are far more complicated, complex space games. You're hearing one right now if you can hear the music. Um, but Master of Orion 2 is one of those that you can go back and you can play... I, 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 for a long time, I played this every year. It was my it was my anniversary game. Every anniversary of my um, channel, I played Master Ryan too, and um, I, I, I love it, like I do with all these games. But I would happily play this. I would happily become a Master of Ryan two channel. Um, I have so many. Um, a friend and I used to always play Hot Seat multiplayer with this. Good times. Good times. Uh, we're on number five. Number five. Civilization 2. This is also a little lower. A little lower than I anticipated. Um, came out in 96. There it is. You know, build an empire. Conquer the world. Start ancient times. Work your way up. Modern times. This was the, this is the, this is my favorite civilization. Some will say Civilization 4 is the best. They're probably right, but I like this one the best. Um, no Alpha, no Alpha Centauri on this list. Alpha Centauri is a good time, but I didn't play. I didn't play a ton of Alpha Centauri. Anyway, uh, um, this is another thing, sort of in that keep for our L. It's there's much more complex games out there like Civ Four, um, but the simplicity yet complexity. It, it it's a very simple game, but there's a lot of complexity behind it. And it still holds up. I just played it a few days ago. I got whooped. It's, it's, another, it's another thing that I like about the older sieves versus the newer sieves. It's hard. Um, it's tough. And um, I appreciate that. I like losing. I like losing games. I, I don't care. And you may have noticed this with the list as well. Winning games isn't really the big deal. I just like enjoy playing the games. And if I can, pl if I play a game, it's like easy to win it. But if it if it's like a challenge and I and I get to losing is fun. Yeah, that's a that's a good that's a good uh, saying. Someone should use that. Played a Civ game for a long time that lets you run a game as dinosaurs. Oh, nice. I um when um when when I played Civ two, so this came out when it's in ninety six. So I was thirteen. And. You, there's a rules file, just a text file, rules file, and you can go in there and you can edit everything in there. 
Um, you can change like how much something hits for. You can change the sprites even. So I'd make my own scenarios. I always wish that Civ, every Civ, I don't understand why this is a thing, but every single civilization skips over the medieval era. You know, you got a good thousand years in there of castles and things, but they always seem like as soon as you get to like castle, or you don't like castle, but as soon as you get to like catapults and knights, you're getting gunpowder just immediately. And, and there's never a good, I don't know, what, what kind of tangent is this? There's never a good medieval time, and so I would always rearrange things to make medieval time last longer and more knights and things. But anyway, Civ 2 is my number five on my list. Now, if you'd asked me, a month ago, I would have said I like Civ 2 better than Colonization. But I played Colonization. I played Civ 2. I like Colonization better. Um, Sid Meier's Colonization came out in 94. And, col you know, Colonize the New World. That kind of thing. Um, what do I like it more? I think I like it more because... I, th I think it maybe it's just the focus of it. Um, you don't, you're not like stuck in that tech tree of, of always advancing. You're kind of, you kind of set in that time period. I also really like that the colonists are also the ones that kind of work in your town and work. The, I, I like the way that I like that system. And um, I wish there was another one that, like, there was another. I wish that was a thing that happened more in more games. I don't know any other game that does that. Maybe there's other ones, and I'm just not aware of it. It still is your citizen comes into town and then moves in. And yeah, the music, of course. The music is, is good stuff as well. Um, but yeah, colonization is good stuff. And I put it on my number three. So we got Sid Meier's Civilization 2 for number five. We got Sid Meier's Colonization, number four. We've got number three, Sid Meier's Pirates. Sid Meier, um, he's ma he makes some good stuff. Um, what's there to say about pirates? Oh, four Sid games, because that Railroad Tycoon back at number uh, 16. Uh, Sid Meier's Pirates. Why can't anyone, why can't anyone make a Pirates game half as good as Sid Meier's Pirates? I've played so many pirate games, and I just hope maybe this will be as good as Sid Meier's Pirates. It's not. God, I don't understand why it's so, what's so hard about it. Um, but it, man, it, um, it's a good one. I don't know what to say about it. Um, you're a pirate. Sail the Caribbean. You know. Be a pirate. And uh, came out in... Well, it originally came out in 87. I remember playing the old one. I guess it was on, like, Apple II. I don't know what it was on. But I would have been real young. So I remember, like, watching my brothers play. And one thing that I kind of wish that this one kept... I, I kind of wish, but I kind of wish... I'm kind of not. I'm kind of glad it doesn't. It's on the old one. I talked about this. The old one had a, old, had a big map. You had, that you had to figure out where you were at using the map. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I'll just I'll just sit here and just look at this. Look at this. I want to play some. I want to play some pirates tonight. Um, number that was number three. Number two on my list. Dwarf Fortress. Dwarf Fortress came out in two thousand six. This is when Dwarf Fortress came out. Uh, this one you go out, you know. You build Moria, bunch of dwarves. Go out, build a um, build a fort, build some mines. Incredibly complex. How many games? I wonder. They should, someone should make a list. How many games put in their description inspired by Dwarf Fortress? Um, this was on the other end. So this is this is the other end of the Keeper RL colonization Civ Two thing. This one is complex. There's a lot going on. Um. And, and the stories you get, the stories, remember the stories, that's, I keep hitting my microphone, the stories is what makes it so special. And, um, but yeah, there we go, so yeah, Door Fortress is number two on my list, um, build a colony, you know, all that kind of stuff. Incredibly complex. I, uh, sometimes, sometimes I miss the uh, the non-Steam version, but I'm not sure I could go back to it. Maybe I will one of these days. Okay, number one. Anyone have any guesses? I'm, I've, I've said it multiple times, so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> XCOM. The original XCOM. Turn-based strategy. Squad tactics. Aliens attack on Earth. Now, you'll notice a theme here. 
and I've I've said the same theme. We're nobodies. Aliens come in. The aliens are way better than us. It's tough. Um, along with that, you've got your squad, and if your squad manages to survive, they're they're heroes. And you remember these folks. I remember, I remember some of the names of the people that I used like from how long ago? From a long, long time ago, playing this game. I remember their names. Just from playing XCOM, even though they're just some random, random female, for instance. Bill Nye from, like, one of the first series, my first series I ever did on here. Um, on XCOM, because they, they start out as nobody, they can't hit anything, but they manage to level up and become a hero. And uh, So, I'm going to I'm gonna say why I like this one versus the new ones. And the new ones, XCOM, you're like your superheroes. You know, you go out there and you're blasting aliens and you got, you know, you're... You got these, like, whatever. You're blasting aliens. In this one, you're a bunch of nobodies, and you die real easy. That's my number one. Came out in 94. And, yes, I've played it a bunch on the channel, and it's still best game. That's it. I'm sure I have forgotten some. Um, I was wary about this list, because I wasn't sure. I, I was like, think, trying, I, I can't leave anything out. I know I'm going to leave something out. Um... But there's my there's my my favorite games ever. Nope, no transport tycoon. It's a good one. Civ one is a fantastic one. Um. And yeah, I don't know what to say. It is a really good one. Diablo two. I've played a lot of Diablo two. These are all games that would easily could easily be on my list or honorable mentions, but. Um, no, Banished was not on my list. I didn't play a lot of Banished. I only played Banished uh, a few years after it came out, actually. But anyway, there is my list for my, my favorite 20 plus a few games ever.